I mean, if you did 70, you should be doing at least 100. <laughs> Let's see. Let me, let me challenge sure. myself. So I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. I'm not good at arching my back. Okay. <laughs> okay. So arch my back Let's when I'm pulling down. Hold on one second. Welcome viewers to Health is Well, a fitness show that speaks about different activities that you can do in the territory to maintain a healthy lifestyle while residing in the British Virgin Islands. Our first episode, we wanted to start with, you know, the subject of fitness. Where better to start than a gym? But today we will be speaking on the subject matter of fitness and who better to speak to than a fitness instructor? That is of Mrs. Joel Turnbull, who is also the owner of Body You Fit. Our viewers, today's episode will be sponsored by Thrive by JBY and we will also include that in our segment where we, this particular show, we have five segments in total. The first, getting to know the individual and the subject matter, in this case fitness. Two, equipment and attire. Three, the workout plan and the workout schedule where you'll see me being physically involved with the particular activity and you decide whether I failed it or whether I aced it. Four, nutrition, which is also important when it comes to fitness. And five, facts and myths about fitness. Follow me. have with us Mrs. Joel Turnbull, who is owner of Body and Fit and fitness instructor as well, who's here to join us to speak about the subject of fitness. Welcome and thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, we'll first start to talk about our, you know, in our first segment, it's all about getting to know the individual and the subject, which is fitness for this particular episode. So for those who may be wondering, who is Joel? Well, um, as you said, I am a certified personal trainer and fitness instructor about four years now, but I've actually been in the fitness industry and a fitness athlete for 23 years. Started at the age of 17 and I'm actually 40 now. And I've been consistent with training, working out for three to four days a week ever since. But mm. I was, was going to do my next question, you know, for, for, for yourself, like what would have gotten you into fitness? And as you just said, you know, you were an athlete from, from 17 plus, you know, and you would have maintained that particular lifestyle. Um, is that the usual age that you would see a lot of persons getting into fitness? Well, pretty much. Um, for me, it was fresh out of high school. Um, it was more like a hobby for me. I didn't really take it seriously initially until later down. And, and at what particular stage, I know you did say you were an athlete um, in terms of, you know, you know, obviously you have to do certain routines to maintain fitness and stuff. But at what age did you really take it really serious to the level where, you know, you're obviously a fitness instructor? I would say about seven years ago, I started getting more serious into it. Once I started seeing my results, um, I've always had the consistency, but just actually getting into it and learning the science behind of it, um, being motivated to get into doing the actual work, doing the courses to become a, a certified personal trainer, I would say seven years ago. In seven years, and obviously, yeah. oh, that would have taken a lot of um, training, etc. My next question, basically, is, is what is fitness? Because a lot of persons have a little, a, a number of misconceptions when it comes to defining fitness. How would you define fitness as an expert? Well, for me, fitness, by definition, would be one's ability to do daily activities at optimal performance. So, with fitness, when you think of fitness, you're thinking about five components. We're talking about your cardiovascular endurance, your muscular endurance, your muscular strength, flexibility, as well as body composition. And in terms of, um, for those persons maybe wondering, how do you get into being a certified fitness professional, especially from the context of the British Virgin Islands? Well, there are many programs out there. I chose to do uh, an online fitness um, program, which is called the International Sports Sciences Association. And I pretty much did that over the course of a couple months, and I was able to um, obtain my certification as a personal trainer. 
And in terms of fitness now, you know, obviously my, my, my show is all about a healthy lifestyle and fitness. Um, how necessary is such in the British Virgin Islands? Well, I mean, it's necessary in the BVI and anywhere else in the world because when you talk about physical activity, you want to be able to feel good from the inside out. Exercising is not just about looking good, it's about how it makes you feel. And um, physical activity is important, exercising is important to help to reduce stress, it helps to reduce depression, and to prevent conditions such as high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and many types of cancers, um, heart disease as well. So um, the more you're out of a sedentary lifestyle, that will help to basically reduce the chances of getting into those. Yeah. And it's important that you actually mention that too, because I know um, I've been watching a number of interviews recently when it comes to mental health, and a lot of persons that tend to suffer from mental health often turn to fitness and being in the gym to cope with such. Um, have you been, to, in your experience, have you seen anyone uh, of such nature, you know, you know, going through some depression and just turning to the gym and just, you know, transforming their lifestyle through the gym and it actually helping them? Yeah, definitely. Exercise is therapy. It is really therapy. You can be having a bad day and you come to the gym and you do a couple of movements, you start to feel better because what happens? You exercise, you release endorphins, that's that feel good chemical, right? Great. So um, I think it's important to just, you know, come and de-stress and, and, you know, get it all out there. Great. You see some balls here, firstly. What are these balls? For persons who may be wondering um, of of what types of balls these, these really so are. These are called like your medicine balls. Persons usually use them to uh, for, for ab workouts, for example. Oh, so this is what you need because I'm, I'm trying to get some abs. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one way you can use them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we see some some small weights, some light weights. I'm assuming assume these are for females. It doesn't have to be for females only. Um, we use them, use them normally in our group training sessions. So um, when we're thinking about toning and sculpting the body, we tend to use the lighter weights. This is, this yeah. is, this is really 10 pounds? Yeah, it is. It seems way more heavy than 10 pounds. You know, it's all about equipment now. Um, talk to me about equipment. I see this machine in front of me. What is this machine? Just briefly describe it for those persons who may be interested. Okay, so this machine is called the seated leg press. It works your legs, quads, hamstrings, as well as your glutes. So it's a lower body exercise. Okay. And we'll make our way over here to the treadmills. I realize that the treadmills are tend to, they're very popular uh, machinery. Um, and I want to ask you the question too, a lot of persons tend to prefer treadmill over actual walking and running. Is there a difference? Um, you can achieve the same um, benefits between both. Um, running for some persons seems to be a bit more exciting than actually sticking on a treadmill because it's stationary. Um, so either or, you can get the same benefits of burning calories. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. And the next uh, machine here, you would see a, a, I believe it's a step machine? Yes. But that's the correct term? Power mill step climber, yeah. Okay, great. And, and how frequent are, are these particular machines used? Because I know a lot of persons come in the gym, they want to bulk, they want to build muscle. Uh, how, how, how important are these types of machines when it comes to actually working out and being fit? Right, so some persons, they would use the cardio machines before as a warm-up, before they get into the actual workout, and others, they would use it at towards the end of their workout, whether it's for 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, okay, great. So what are the other more popular machines that you would often recommend? I see this very powerful machine here in the middle, yeah. um, tend to have a number of different um, so this Things is our cable machine, so you do your lower or your back as well as your lat pull down on the other side. This machine is, oh, this is very versatile. You can work practically any muscle group on this by just changing out the various um, pieces um, to it. Um, your assist dip chin if you're doing your pull-ups. 
this actually helps you for persons that don't know oh, how to do a proper okay, pull-up. Okay, that doesn't um, made with me and mine. Exactly. If you're okay. not strong enough to just pull yourself up, okay. then this assists you in doing okay, that. Okay, great. Yeah. And as you can see here, uh, a gentleman here is actually utilizing the like press machine as well. One of my least favorite machines in the gym. One of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so speak a little bit about this as well. All right, so the incline leg press, again, it works a lower body machine. And on this side of the room, all the equipment's plate loaded. So for your bodybuilders and those persons who really want to get that mass in, this is your area. Okay, great. <laughs> And, and also too, we see some, um, we were speaking about this machine in particular, which is a assisted, assisted machine that helps when you want to bench press and probably do uh, Squat. squats, yeah. etc. Speak about that as well. So your Smith machine, so versus your free weights right here, persons tend to prefer this one because it offers that assistant as well. You just flip the bar and it stays in position and then you do your squats or as he's doing here, a chest press. It doesn't move. You control it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds like my favorite machine to be. Um, so also to um, what other uh, are there, are there, are, there, are there any other ones that would would basically uh, stand out, especially for persons. Also to not to be left out. The app, this, this one helps to work the app the as well too. Boost the ball, yes, correct. And I would say this machine here is probably the more, most versatile piece of equipment okay. in the gym. Again, like the cable that we talked about earlier, you can. Pull up a chair and do your chest. You can work your triceps, you do your biceps. You just change out the accessories, the bars, the, the, the ropes, and you're able to do wonders. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> sounds really good. Get deep breath in, up, exhale. Oh, no, all the way up, all the way up. Slow it down for me, yeah. So I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. I'm not good at arching my back, okay. <laughs> okay. So arch my back Let's when I'm pulling down. Hold on one second. Is business slow, cash flow down, hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. All right, so first movement for the day, push-ups. So you're gonna get down on all fours. So you wanna get your arms slightly out from shoulder width, yes. So your arms are straight as well as your lower body. All right. I'm doing how many? Yes. Um, 10, I'm doing 10. So you're doing um, 10 reps. Let's go for 10 reps. Okay, so get on all fours. Get your arms slightly out from shoulder width. All right, get deep breath in, up, exhale. Oh no, all the way up, all the way up. Slow it down for me. So I need time on the tension. Up, all the way up. Extend your elbows all the way up. There you go. Ten? All right, yeah, that's good. I didn't count, I was watching your form. <laughs> I didn't count either. So okay. next, we're gonna go to RDL. So to start, doing the RDL, Romanian deadlift, and we're starting with our feet shoulder width apart, slight bend in your knees, we're doing a mixed grip. So underhand with the left, overhand with the right. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna start by bringing the bar a bit closer to us, yeah? We're gonna grip here on the outside. All right. So we're gonna start up. Exhaling at the top, right? So as you descend, you're gonna keep a neutral spine. Push your butt back so you feel the stretch in your hamstrings. So you're coming down towards the shin. Back up, exhale. Your core nice and tight. Okay, so. That's all. 
the sides on the top of it because they're going good. All right. Okay. Use your spine so don't come all the way up. Right there. Good. to the last pull down. I was I couldn't see your knees from your pants. Okay. Yeah. But you look you look fine. Yeah. Look cool. Surprisingly good. So you're about to just show me now my next workout session. As you can see I'm a little breathing a little heavy already. A little brief workout but I'm cool. So we're to the lat pull down. Yes, so we work in the back now and we're gonna grab the bar right here down in the middle. So your thumbs, you're gonna do an overhand grip, right? Okay. You're gonna sit. Okay. So you're gonna lean slightly back. So you're aiming to get your elbows down to your side. Bring the bar towards your chest. Exhale at the bottom. So focus on the back. I mean, if you did 70, you should be doing at least 100. <laughs> let's see. Let me, let me challenge sure? myself. 100. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, let's see. So get your elbows down to your side. All right. All right. Okay. So I'll make one small change and you just scoot back a bit. Yeah. Go back in, go back in. Okay, right there, that's where I want you. Right here? Yeah, so I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. I'm not good at arching my back, okay. <laughs> okay. So arch my back Let's when I'm pulling down. Hold on one second. So get your arms out on the right, bring that out slightly out to the right. Yeah, good. Okay. So let it go. Yep. And I want you to look straight ahead of you. There you go. Good. Elbows down to your side, yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh. Good work. Woo. All right. Hey, get on. Grab at this side. Okay, keep your core nice and tight. So you're gonna get your foot, this is a really big foot placement area. <laughs> so I try to go center, mm -hmm. all right? So I push off, get my legs about hip width apart, mm -hmm. all right? So you can get your toes slightly stuck out. So you're pushing, take a deep breath in, push up, exhale at the top. You maintain a slight bend in your knee so you don't want to lock out like that. Okay. Okay? And you're pushing from your heel. Get your legs hip width apart. So try and get in the middle. The, the middle of the plate. So go up a bit more. Yeah, and get your legs out now. Out, 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 wider, wider. All right. There you go. Nice. That's good. Yep. Okay, head back. Right. 
So take a deep breath in. Let's go. Push up your heel. Down. Up. Exhale. That's it. You got it. Nice. Do? Well, if, it, if it's one thing, oh, sorry. If it's one thing I like to do every time in the gym. Mm -hmm. The little bicep or, curls? Little okay, bicep curls. I, I thought of that. All right, so next move we're going to get into is the barbell bicep curls. So you're going to bend, grab the bar, get your elbows tucked in, take a deep breath in, curl it out, exhale. Full extension. All right, let's try it. Take a deep breath in. Exhale all the way down. Come on. All right. All right. Mm. Whoa. Hey. So that was a, a nice little mini workout session. Obviously, we are time constrained, you know, obviously due to our, our program. But nonetheless, it was a, a really good workout. As you can see from the little workout session, I'm a little out of breath, <laughs> but Definitely feeling nice and and good. And as you can see, the quality of the material of this particular outfit by Thrive is holding up extremely well. Um, so viewers, as you would have seen, the workout session is up to you guys now to determine whether I filled it or whether I aced it. Lifting weights makes you bulky. Because you know, this one is more specific too for women too. Women believe, I, I can't lift weights because if I lift weights, I'm going to look like a man. Is that true? Choose your mix, choose your flavor. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. How important is nutrition when it comes to fitness? Very important. So we tend to apply the 80% to 20% rule. Um, nutrition, whatever you put into your body, is going to determine what you get out in terms of your results. So it's very important to have a balanced diet um, and based on what you're trying to achieve, if you're trying to lose weight, obviously you will try to be in a calorie deficit, mm. which means you're consuming less calories than you burn. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to gain weight, then you would be in a calorie surplus, so you would consume more than you're burning. So I have a question for you. For someone like me who's trying to lose, you know, my stomach to get some abs and stuff, mm -hmm. um, ordinarily I would, I would do a, a workout, for example, and then I would go and eat a little chicken-based meal or whatever. Am I doing the right thing? Okay, so after your workout, um, you would want to basically cover the muscles that were bro broken down mm. during your workout. So a nice recovery shake, protein shake would work, or you can have a piece of protein as well as something green 
for your dinner. Mm, and just that should be sufficient. To basically restore the muscles. Yes. So now you talk about the subject of protein. I see we have some fruits here and stuff, and we have some some different stuff to make a uh, 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 protein. I want you to just walk us through that process of making a shake, for example, especially after intense workout session. Okay, good. All right, so we have uh, three ingredients here, strawberries, banana, and mango. So we're gonna put them all together inside here as well. I'm gonna use a plant-based protein. Um, it's by Garden of Life. Uh, I actually like this one, mm -hmm. along with the grass-fed. Um, there's also the gold standard, which a lot, been told a lot that, of the guys like yeah, this Yeah, I'm told one. this is a very popular one. Yeah. Mm. So, both are really fairly good. So we're gonna start with a little bit of strawberries. Let's put that in here. So you see that, and so that is strawberries, banana, and this is pineapple. Pineapple, yes. Okay, I said mangoes earlier, but yes, pineapple. Oh, pineapple. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Let's see, shadow we have the mangoes. All right. So we're just gonna put a little bit of water mm -hmm. down at the bottom. Okay. And for those maybe wondering, this is for all frozen. Speak about in terms of the importance of having them frozen. Um, you can use natural fruits mm. or frozen. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. I tend to actually put some oats in there, but we're out, oats, out right? of oats at the okay, moment. That's fair. Yeah. So um, you can either put a tubes of honey or no honey. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much up to you. I'm just gonna put a little bit. Okay. okay. Just for a little flavor. And then this is where the lovely stuff happens now, <laughs> where everything is mixed together. There you go. Great. Let's try it. So here, as you can see, the end result, strawberry. Let me just take a quick look. Really tasty. Thank you. So what people, you were ordinarily hear people saying working out on an empty stomach helps to burn more fat. Is that truthful or is that a myth? I'd say it's a myth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because basically you want to be able to have something in your body. To Food is fuel, so you need something in your body to, to, to be able to expand. Okay, right? so that, that, is, that is a myth. Yeah. Okay. So longer workouts are more impactful and meaningful? I would say that's a myth. Mm. Um, you're able to get in um, the benefits of whatever it is you're trying to do by doing multiple workouts in shorter segments. Mm. Yeah. So that means I have to go to those persons that are in the gym for two and three hours and tell them, listen. No, not necessarily. <laughs> you can do a high intensity interval training workout, which lasts about 20 to 30 minutes um, and able to get the same benefits as you would working for a longer period of time. And with shorter workouts, you can focus on different muscle groups per day. So say if you have three days a week that you actually work out, you would say upper body one day, lower body the next, and then the third day you can you know, do a full body workout. Okay. Yeah. Um, so more sweat equals a better workout. Is that truthful? That's not true. Okay. <laughs> so, so sweat is just your body's response from, you know, you're, you're working out, so your body's heating up. Mm. So the sweat means it helps you to cool down mm. pretty much, but it doesn't mean because you don't sweat a lot that you're, you're you know, you're not, what's the word you were using earlier? Um, I guess working out as, as much. Right, you're, you're, yeah. So it doesn't mean because you, you're not sweating, you're not, more fit or okay, not, yeah, fit, yeah. you know working out enough As, yeah. or you know because you sweat a lot necessarily means that you're working harder because there are some people who sweat more than others exactly. naturally exactly then as biologically how their mm -hmm. body's composition definitely okay so to the next one lifting weights makes you bulky because you know this one is more specific too for women too women right. believe I, I can't lift weights because if I lift weights I'm going to look like a man 
Is that true? That's not true. So if you're trying to basically increase muscle mass, then you would want to get into some sort of moderate to heavy weight lifting. But apart from it being make, making you bulky, that's not true. It's all about, again, you go back to nutrition. Whatever you put inside your body determines what you're going to get out. So if you're, if you're doing a, a, a nice lean diet, then um, you would build lean muscle. You wouldn't necessarily get all bulky. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, no pain, no gain. And you know, there are people who think that if you go in the gym and you, next day you're not bound and, and in you know, some sort of pain, you didn't really work out. Is that true? That's not true. Um, it's, a, it's a nice saying, no pain, no gain. <laughs> I mean, it's true in some sense of depending on how you look at it. But as it relates to working out, if you're new to it, you're gonna feel it because it's something that you haven't done before. So it's like your body's surprised, like, oh my gosh, what's this, right? Mm. But uh, if you're actually getting into an exercise and it involves more intensity than you're accustomed to, then you are going to feel some pain. But the more you do it, you're gonna get used to it. Your body's going to adapt to it until you basically increase the intensity again. The next time you might feel it again, but you don't necessarily have to be sore every single time you work out. Okay, great. Yeah. And the second last one is running burns more than cycling. How truthful is this? I'd say that's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, because with the cycling, you're, you're basically in one position. And I think with running, you can tend to burn a little bit more calories than just... As, especially if you're someone like me, you know when you're cycling, there are grace periods where you can actually stop and let the bicycle actually continue exactly. the journey. Exactly. You know, whereas you know, with running, you know, it's continuous. Continuous. Okay, so that's actually factual. Mm -hmm. Also, the final one, exercising increases productivity. Is that true? That is true. You know, if you're working the regular 9 to 5, towards the end of the day, coming down, you start to feel a bit tired especially after lunch. So when you get your physical activity in, some people prefer to do it early in the morning. It keeps them alert. It gives them the energy that they need to thrive and to, it delay, delays fatigue. So they're able to stay in motion and be their best selves throughout the day. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, that brings to the end of our segment, to the end of our show. Um, I want to thank you so much um, for having me today. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your time. A lot of knowledge would have been shared to the public regarding, you know, fitness and, you know, the importance of fitness in the territory. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me. Well, viewers, you would have heard it um, from Mrs. Joel Turnwell, who's owner and fitness instructor here at Body You Fit. We would have covered a whole section of, um, you know, fitness in the territory and fitness in general. And you would have seen me working out that there's so much to do when it comes to fitness and living a healthy lifestyle in the British Virgin Islands. Thank you so much for joining us and until next episode.